They are on kick, K I C K dot com. Uh, we are live. By the time you see it, we won't be probably. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Oh, this! If you missed the live, this is where you can catch some of the uh, you know highlights and things of that nature. Don't forget, we do got the Patreon, and this is everything that is on there. Everything. Got a little merch. Oh God. If you think I don't wear my own shirts or buy my own stuff, I absolutely do. And I got to purchase the mugs just like everybody else. Tough. <laughs> but I'm trying to make it a goal to only wear my own stuff, man. Because for what? Why would I wear anybody else's? Um... And don't forget we got the Discord as well, man. This is the sadistic case of Philip Nicholson. I like this channel, man. Disturbing. Disturbing. I'm subbed up. Let me like the video. And I got my po and I got my uh bell on. It'd be some crazy cases from on here. And you keep it short and sweet. Let's get into it. Well, short and this case takes place in the United Kingdom on the 26th of Duh. May 2015. Wait, why I gotta be on my birthday this happens? Come on, man. We already got a bad name as Gemini's, and here we go. Stuff happening on my birthday. Philip Nicholson was a 22-year-old man from Dorset. Looks like a P.E.D.O. He was described as a kind young man and was very close with his family. Philip had some learning difficulties, but made great efforts to be as independent as possible. It would be in 2013, age 20, that he made a decision to move out of his home and went into supported living. The opportunity of being independent made Philip incredibly happy. I stand by what I said. And he looked forward to the next chapter of his life. He was described as having global development delay and had autistic traits. Global development delay is an umbrella term used for those who are significantly delayed in their cognitive and physical development. He also had an IQ of around 62. Philip moved to Bournemouth and he was supported to live independently by a care agency and was assigned care workers. He was assessed to determine what aspects of his life he would need assistance in. And despite his learning disabilities, Philip was assessed as having capacity to make his own decisions and they found that he would be able to have a relationship, and this was something that he wanted very much. However, a doctor who had worked with Philip since 2009 said he had difficulty expressing his feelings, and that he tended to say what he thought others wanted to hear. Whilst living in Bournemouth, Philip had told a... So he was like any other man? <laughs> okay. ...community learning disability nurse that he often felt lonely and longed for a relationship. This was something that he had told his parents too. In March of 2014, Philip began speaking to a woman named Isabella Gosling. The two began speaking on social media and entered a relationship fairly quickly. Isabella had atypical autism and suffered with personality disorders. Philip was happy as he now had the two things he wanted the most, independence and a girlfriend. However, on the 3rd of April, a safeguard alert was made by the staff where Philip lived. They believed that Isabella was forcing the physical aspect of the relationship and was bullying him for money. Concerns for Philip only grew. So, wait a minute. Okay, that's not funny. Isabel was forcing the physical aspect of a relationship. So she was forcing that thing on Philip. And asking him for money when in the following months it was discovered that she was taking serious financial advantage of him. For example, she had taken a phone contract out in his name. It was found that she would also frequently emotionally manipulate him too by sending him a number of threatening text messages. Okay, now I can know when I'm wrong. Let me backtrack here. Okay, Philip, my bad. R.I.P. Philip. Well, R.I.P. I don't know who's deceased yet, but Philip, I was wrong. For assuming, you know, that earlier. 
messages. The police did become involved at some point, My bad. point due to the messages getting out of hand. The relationship ended and Isabella began a relationship with a new man named Richard Moore, who she was seeing behind Philip's back. Despite the breakup, the manipulation continued. The two were able to convince Philip to allow them access into his bank account. They took out £800 of Philip's own money. Richard would also send Philip a number of threatening messages. In September of 2014, Philip reported these threatening messages to the police. And it turned out that the police were very- Okay, so Philip just wanted love. Philip just wanted love at the end of the day. And he's being taken advantage of. Because he has a lower IQ. But he's doing the right thing by going to the police. But the police, as, as I don't know what's going on, but the police, as normal, ain't doing enough. Be aware of Richard. He was known to target vulnerable people. He had been homeless at some point, so he would use vulnerable people for housing and money. Although they would send threatening messages, they would also sometimes lure Philip back with nice messages too. They would bully him, then pretend to be his friend on repeat. This was just a game to them. They knew they could treat Philip poorly and then make him come back whenever they pleased. Damn, I feel bad. <laughs> Alright, my bad, Philip Gango. Uh, if I was your friend, this would have never happened to you. 100%. Because I don't. Me, one thing I don't like is a bully. Bullies are L, L people in general. They'll never succeed in life. They'll never be anything but that. And they seemed to take great joy in toying with him. Philip was still living in assisted accommodation, where the staff were aware of his previous relationship with Isabella. They deemed him to be at risk of emotional, domestic, and financial exploitation. In May of 2015, Philip received more threatening text messages from Isabella and Richard. They told him that he was a dead man and that he should go and dig his own grave. Richard also messaged him saying, if I find you, I will kill you and I will slice you up into pieces. Without Isabella, Philip grew lonely again and told a nurse that he wanted a girlfriend. Eventually, Philip decided enough was enough and he stopped speaking with Isabella. Although after this, Isabella told Philip that she was now pregnant and said that he was the father. This was but more manipulation. She was very aware of Philip's good nature. Once learning that she was pregnant, Philip decided Being a nice guy, man. Nice guys finish last. Decided to Allegedly. Let Isabella back in his life, as he would tell his parents that he wanted to be there for her and the- Need business training for communication, DEI, Excel, But Isabella had also told Richard that he was the father too. Later on into May, Isabella fabricated a twisted lie. She told Richard that Philip had forced himself up. Yo, this goes to show you, bro. I'm not even going to lie. I'm not even going to hold it in or bite my tongue. If a female sees an opportunity to take advantage, not, not all women are like this. But there's a good amount. If a female sees an opportunity to take advantage or, or do some funny, goofy shit, they're gonna do it. No matter what, no matter what cognitive level you are at, it's almost nature in, in to 2015 and above. It's crazy. It's crazy what we've become, man, as a society. Upon her. This was an outright lie and is a claim that has never been substantiated. Isabella and Richard sent Philip a message telling him that he needed to come to their flat as soon as possible. So Philip... And that go both ways. Men will take advantage too, man. But like... It's not, in, it's not as much though. <laughs> ...did just that. On arrival at their flat, they held him captive for some time telling him that he needed to confess to S.A.ing Isabella, but Philip was able to escape. On the 26th of May 2015, Isabella and Richard concocted an evil plan. Isabella contacted Philip and told him that a woman was at their flat 
and that this woman wanted to meet him. However, this was Isabella using a fake voice. She knew full well that Philip would likely fall for the plan if they promised him a relationship with someone. Uh, Philip had no friends? Like, nobody he vented to or talked to or nothing? That could be like, yo, bro, let me go with you or something. And he did. Philip can be seen on CCTV meeting with the couple. They spend some time in the town shopping before making their way back to Isabella's flat. Here on screen now, you can watch them all walking together. Philip seems to be following them rather appreh- Isabella's built like a rugby player. I don't even under- Okay. Apprehensively, given their past behavior, he likely would be worried about what they would do to him. The three then entered the flat. Upon entering, Richard immediately began attacking Philip in an incredibly brutal way. This attack was very much planned. As Richard began to beat Philip, Isabella pulled out her mobile phone and began recording what was happening. They began telling Philip to confess to forcing himself on Isabella. During the 17 minute audio recording, Philip can be heard crying and pleading. He says to the couple, stop, please, I just don't want to be threatened, I want to be friends. But they don't listen. Richard no, then pulled out no. a knife and stabbed Philip in the neck. Yo. Please, I just don't want to be threatened, I want to be friends. But they don't listen. How could they do this to people? Like, seriously. Like, I had a friend, I don't want to mention his name, I had a friend, genuinely, my friend, and I've known him from basketball. Uh, I used to go play ball at Export, and he was like, you know what I'm saying? He was, you know, he had issues. When people used to pick on him, I'm like, yo, bro, like, he's with me from now on. If you picking on him, you picking on me. Like, I don't really put up with that type of shit. Like, no, don't do that, bro. He already gone through enough in life. Like, what, the, what are you doing? Man just want to play ball. He want to be happy. Like, oh, bro. I'm still cool with this dude today, man. He hit me up like last, he hit me up like a few months ago. And he was like, yo, bro, I just wanted to say thank you for being my friend. Bro, I almost cried when he said that. Because I knew what it meant to him then. And he just justified it. I, I, I just hate people, man. It's the type of shit that make me hate people. Dislike people. It make me watch my back. Richard then pulled out a knife and stabbed Philip in the neck. After witnessing blood coming from Philip's neck, Isabella can be heard saying, Can you come off my bed please? You're bleeding everywhere. Philip then says, I want to go home. To which Isabella replies, You're not going home. Philip lost a significant amount of blood. As he was bleeding out, the couple taunted him further. Richard said, Just stay there and bleed. Are you getting paralyzed yet? Have you stopped breathing yet? Please do, because nobody will miss you. As Philip bled out on the floor, he continued to apologize before saying, I just wanted to be friends. Isabella then told I genuinely hope when they leave this earth, they burn for in, in, in eternity for a, 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 a long time. And when they do finally leave this earth, it's in the most heinous way. Tells Richard to finish him off. Richard then sliced Philip's throat. 17 minutes after the attack had begun, Philip was dead. Isabella continued recording as the two began suggesting that they should prop Philip's body up in a way to make it look like he had done this to himself. They propped his body up against the fridge and placed the knife in his hand. The two can be seen on CCTV yet again. They are seen walking away from the scene hand in hand and with their arms around each other. They get onto a bus and on their journey, Richard proposed to Isabella and she accepted. But soon after, Isabella made a call to her social workers and told them, Richard has done something bad. I couldn't stop him. I feel really sick. Richard has killed Philip. The police soon arrived at Isabella's flat and they were met with the gruesome scene. 
Isabella and Richard were both arrested. At first, they tried to claim that Philip had done this to himself. The knife, which had a serrated edge, was found in Philip's hand, but the police could obviously see right through this. When this didn't work, they claimed that it was because Philip had essayed Isabella, which again was never substantiated, and the investigators are 99.9% .9 sure it never happened. Investigators believe that this was another manipulation tactic by Isabella to give Richard an excuse to physically harm Philip. Isabella's phone was taken and downloaded. Investigators searched through her device and found the horrific recording that documented Philip's final moments and the two plotting how to get away with the crime. With such overwhelming evidence against them, the two were charged with murder. At a hearing, Richard finally admitted responsibility for what he had done to Philip. Isabella, however, proclaimed her innocence. Despite all of the evidence- Isabella, you're the ringleader. You masterminded all. You need to get the worst, the worst, the, I'm talking about, they need to charge you with not just M, but they need to charge you with like a lot of other things as well. And the recording that she herself had created, she pled not guilty on the grounds of diminished responsibility. Because of this, a trial that. would have to be held and both of Philip's parents attended. There, they saw exactly what had happened to their beloved son. They saw the crime scene photos and listened to the harrowing seven minute recording of Philip's final moments, where he can be heard repeatedly apologizing and begging to go home before he was brutally killed. During the trial, Isabella insisted that she could do if nothing. Philip's parents see this or something, man, I didn't, my bad. <laughs> I, my bad about the beginning, seriously. I'm out here judging. The, I thought it was Philip. I thought it was Philip that did something, but if Philip is the victim, man. Think to stop the attack. Recordings were played of her egging on Richard, telling him to hurt Philip. As you can imagine, it was clear to the court exactly what had happened. It said that during the trial, neither Isabella nor Richard seemed to fully grasp what they had done or how serious. Get the fuck out of here! They grasped it. My bad. Yo, like this is this one is very angering. This one is very angering. Bro had a 62 IQ. He was like a child out here. Yes, the crime was. They appeared to be taking it not too seriously. Both Isabella and Richard were found guilty of murder. As the two were preparing to be sentenced, the pair looked at each other and smiled. This was something that deeply disturbed the court. Isabella was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum term of 19 years. Richard was also sentenced to life in prison with a minimum term of at least 22 years. Following the sentencing, Detective Chief Inspector Stuart Balmer of Dorset Police described Isabella and Richard I ain't even gonna lie, I don't wanna hear it no more. Them weak ass sentences, man. Truly evil. I'm just he said they out. subjected Philip to a brutal and prolonged attack which he said was one of the most harrowing cases he has ever dealt with. So why they only get 19 and 22 years, man? In his 30 year service. Yeah, I'm done. I don't even care. I, I, I don't want to, I don't care to hear the rest of it. Hey! Tell y'all leave a like, comment, subscribe, I'm gone. We'll go What's up, JJ Nash?